You know, I've talked so much about warlocks on this channel that you might actually think that I main one, which is entirely not the case. See, I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea here. To be completely frank, I actually can't stand any of you fucking space nerds. I hate all of you. I really do. But it's a different kind of hatred. It's a hatred of adoration with a hint of jealousy in there. See, you guys are just fucking perfect at everything and it grinds my goddamn gears because I'm torn. Like, I really want to play with the cool kids and be one of those warlock mains that just shits on everything, but I also kind of want to stab things. I'm conflicted. Which is why this video started as a hunter build, but somehow turned into a warlock build. Because... God damn it, because warlocks are better. There, are you happy now? The Elemental Trio, which is now more of a quartet than anything else at this point, is the basic foundation that all three classes stand on. The elements are what give Guardians their powers, but there is none more abnormally flexible than the Warlock. They are the masters of all of the elements. Dawnblade, Voidwalker, Stormcaller, and with the release of Beyond Light, the Shadebinder. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So let's scoot on over to Skill Trees real quick and I'll give you the rundown. Starting with aspects, we're looking at Glacial Harvest and Bleak Watcher, otherwise known as Steve. And if Steve just isn't your thing, you can take Ice Flare Bolts. It'll work just the same. Let's take a closer look and see how they all work. Glacial Harvest is the new Warlock aspect that we got at the start of the season. If you already finished the quest for it on another character, the Stranger will tell you to go to the Pyramid in Beyond to grab it. Freezing targets create stasis shards around frozen targets. Higher tier targets create extra shards. It's got an internal cooldown of about 15 seconds after it's used too many times, which really fucking blows, but it just is what it is. Bleak Watcher creates a stasis turret when you hold down your grenade button as opposed to throwing it, and it fires slowing projectiles to really twist my dick in crucible matches. But for what we're doing here, it's exceptionally handy because this little bastard freezes enemies far more often than you might think. As for Ice Flare Bolts, it doesn't need an introduction. It chains freezing damage to other targets upon the shattering of a frozen target. It's as simple as that. For Fragments, we're looking at Torment, Conduction, Rhyme, and Fractures, with an optional fragment we'll discuss in a second here. The most crucial of the four are Conduction and Rhyme. Rhyme converts all the stasis shards that Glacial Harvest is generating into small amounts of Overshield, which will go away after 10 seconds or when that shield is broken. Any additional shards collected will restart the buff timer and add more to the Overshield as well. Conduction causes those stasis shards to track to your current location. Once you're close enough to them, they'll come to you. The lesser of the two are Torment and Fractures. Torment restores grenade energy each time you take damage from enemy targets, and Fractures increases the cooldown speed of your melee command while you're surrounded. Both are passive cooldown buffs. If Fractures just isn't your thing, you can change it out for Impetus, which is going to reload any stowed weapons and trigger a huge buff to handling, which is an incredible boost. Like I said, they're nice to have, but just keep in mind that they're not actually necessary. You don't require them. Kind of like TikTok, minus the fucking cringe. As for your grenade, I highly recommend the Cold Snap. You can get away with using Duskfield because monsters are going to freeze after they've been stuck in it long enough, but Cold Snap is a surefire way to get those shards, and faster too. Before we move on, we should take a quick look at the Claws of Ahamkara. It'll give us an additional melee charge, which will make our fragments twice as useful. On top is sitting nice and pretty with our exotic of choice, but other than that, there isn't really much else to say about it. That exotic being, Cryosthesia. And I know that anybody watching this is already laughing at me, but just hear me out for a quick second. I swear that there is a method to the madness here. So, L2 burst, right? The thing that literally everybody hates? Well, it also triggers Glacial Harvest, just like any other stasis ability. Essentially, it comes down to the fact that Cryosthesia gives you a fourth avenue for instantaneously freezing anything dumb enough to step in front of you. I know it sounds dumb, but I swear to God that it works. Also, don't be a lazy sack of shit like myself. Just finish the Catalyst quest. It makes the gun a thousand times better. We're gonna flip the screen and start talking about weapons, because they are the make or break section of a loadout as a whole. Since we're utilizing aspects and fragments to build an overshield, we need our abilities on uptime constantly. Especially our melee command, because its cooldown is faster and the freeze is instantaneous. Yet another reason to have claws, because it's 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 just great, there's, there's just no getting around it. That is an indisputable fact. 
In the energy slot, I'm carrying a truth teller. You can take or leave the demolitionist. Personally, I like it because mob crowds will restore chunks of grenade energy every time the launcher takes out a group of targets, which means I can throw a cold snap more often, but it is far from a requirement. Spike or blinding, however, are both top tier, specifically blinding. If you can get your grubby little hands on an auto-loading blinding truth teller, you got fuck off for a grenade launcher and you'd be a goddamn moron not to use it. In the heavy slot, I've got rockets. Any rocket of your choice, provided it also has auto-load. Auto-load in Vorpal or Lasting Impression, either of those are top tier. Especially when you take into account some of the mods that I've slotted, and we're gonna take a look at those right now. Core mods are Blast Radius, Stacks on Stacks, with two stacks of Argent Ordnance, plus Breach and Clear. Secondary mods, none of which are actually necessary, are as follows. Two stacks of hands-on and two stacks of rocket reserves, which allows for a single extra rocket per stack. For most normal rocket launchers, you got things like Deathbringer and Warcliff Coil that are a bit weird. I honestly don't know the increase for those, but that is the mod function on a general level. And lastly, we've got Absolution and Better Already for support mods. I'll elaborate on the functions in the combat section, which we're going to take a look at right now. The first thing you want to know about this is that this is not a healthy stat line. This was cobbled together as an experimental loadout, so do not take this stat line as any sort of recommendation because it is not strong. What you're looking for is high tier strength, discipline, and recovery. Emphasis on the recovery. Reason being is because you're not so much trying to stack an overshield as much as you are trying to keep it as full as you possibly can. This is for damage mitigation, mostly because that 10 or 20 health that it's going to stack on your bar is extremely handy and it'll keep you alive in a number of scenarios in which you 100% should have died. That's why I said you'll feel a bit squishy at first. Rhyme and Conduction are there to counteract that. So let's take a good hard look at this for what it is on a practical level. You have four different ways of freezing targets. Those being Cold Snap, Penumbral Blast, Winter's Wrath, and L2 Burst. All four of those abilities are going to create stasis shards when targets are frozen. The stronger the target, the more shards that are going to be created. Those shards will flock to you because of your fragments, and they're going to fuel a small yet helpful overshield. This legitimately allows you to just waltz right on by champions without a single care in the world, and I mean that literally. The only thing you'll really need to be conscious of is the internal cooldown that Glacial Harvest has after freezing too many things too quickly. However, damage is still the key thing here that everyone is probably concerned about, and rightfully so. So let's talk about that and the combat strategy that goes into it. Blast Radius will charge you with light on multi-kills with grenade launchers or rockets, though you want to avoid using a rocket if you don't have to. Stacks on Stacks will add an additional charge for every stack of charge with light, meaning that a single multi-kill will count for two charges instead of just one. Once charged, you just freeze your target of choice. You'll hit it with a grenade and then you'll switch to your rocket. Argent Ordnance is double stacked to give a decent increase to the rocket damage. That rocket is going to hit and it is going to stagger, which is when you'll throw a grenade to keep the freeze up or use a melee attack, which will buff your handling for a short while. During that time, both of your weapons are going to be reloaded, and at that point, you just rinse and repeat. All you're really doing is just freezing and then cycling through energy and heavy, and then back to kinetic for a short time, in that order. Autoload will take over, and it turns into a circle of chunk damage that can be used to keep control of a boss arena or to dispatch any champions that show up unexpectedly. It can be used for an unlimited amount of different combat scenarios, I swear to god. I have yet to find a combat scenario scenario where this doesn't work. But that's because the key here is the amount of freezing damage that goes out, and there are four different ways to utilize it, like I said earlier. Cold Snap is for the crowds. Penumbral Blast is for the Overload Champion that's charging headfirst to dick you down. L2 Burst is the secondary freeze, and Red Bar Targets, which are literally everywhere, are just cannon fodder for kinetic weapons. A single kill is going to trigger L2 Burst, which is then used to freeze a target at the cost of the magazine. I know it sounds a bit dumb, but it's a fantastic way of stopping champions in their tracks, and that'll give you a few extra seconds to remove them from the equation entirely. Hot swaps between energy and heavy is the damage strategy. You literally can't fuck it up, not unless you've got garbage handling. And even then, I've got a fragment for that too. And if all else fails, Winter's Wrath is there to save you from any imminent death you'll stumble across in those 1340 sectors. Unless you just kind of suck at the game, then you're fucked. There are bunches of new videos headed to the channel in the very near future, so keep your eyes open for those. Either way, you know where I'll be. Goodbye.